Hi, this is Rick, and welcome to Digital Fortress. In today's video, I'm going to show you a reasonably secure method of installing Daedalus Wallet on Windows operating system. I'm going to show two different techniques. One technique is basic installation for most users with, with a reasonable amount of security by checking your antivirus scanners, making sure you're on uh, private Wi-Fi and stuff like that. And the second video is going to be based on uh, advanced users where you know a little bit more about networking and you want to verify that the network is operating correctly and that your antivirus is working correctly, which you would also want to do for the basic installation as well. But I'm going to go through a few more techniques. If you have a little bit more time and you'd like to watch the more advanced video, feel free to do so. But the key is to make sure we're on the proper network and that our antivirus scanners are up to date and have been run. Okay, so that's some of the key goals. This video you're watching now is for the highly attack resistant method for installing Daedalus on the Windows operating system. Let's take a look at what we need to do next. For more advanced users, if you know more about network security, you're an expert and you got a little bit more knowledge, feel free to use all of your advanced procedures and techniques that you know of. These are just some basic ideas that require a little bit more knowledge than what the average household user is going to have. Let's say, for example, you're going to install a staking node or you just want to take that extra step, that extra measure of security to make sure things are extra locked down. This is the procedure you want to use at a minimum and a little further if you know more. Steps one through six shown in blue, we're going to go over the concept of firewall setup, updating the virus scanner, check that we've run the updated antivirus. Step four, verify firewall operation. Five and six, verifying the antivirus operation and connecting Ethernet device Wi-Fi. Even if you're on a private network, we're going to use Ethernet because the Wi-Fi, private, uh, private Wi-Fi is even a little bit vulnerable to attack. Then shown in green, step 7 through 14, the specific steps for downloading the GPG suite, verifying the Shea Summon signature, then downloading Daedalus, verifying the Daedalus Shea Summon signature from GitHub. We want to get the signature from another location, not from the same website. That gives us an extra measure of security. Then down at the bottom, we finally verify the Daedalus signature in step 14, install Daedalus using minimal keystrokes, which is how Daedalus was designed to be installed in the first place. As we go through the firewall setup concept, running the virus scanner, verifying firewall operation and the antivirus operation, and then we're connecting to the internet with Ethernet on a private network, vice Wi-Fi, or a public network. Some of the Wi-Fi switch routers that we're talking about here using are a lot more advanced than the standard home Wi-Fi switch routers. These would be, these are examples of the type that would be used in a small business or if you're setting up a little bit more of an advanced server. I would call this a minimum requirement. There are even better switches and routers that most of you are probably familiar with out there. In these examples, I have the Cisco, Fortinet, Zixel type Wi-Fi switch routers. I recommend definitely do not use a internet service provider issued Wi-Fi switch router or at least the internet service provider Wi-Fi because there was one time I actually had one from the service provider a long time ago and I went to check my account on an external web page. It was external to my house. When I went to the web page, there was a block for my password and it was blurred out with a check mark that says show password. And I checked it on and exposed my password right there on our website, external to my house. I thought, that's not good security at all. So these examples here, you need to be very proficient at using a command line or a web browser interface to configure these types of Wi-Fi switch routers in order to set the firewall up correctly. There is no simple setup wizard. Uh, as far as I know, it takes some level of expertise for setting your inbound and outbound traffic and setting the firewall rules. So if you don't know exactly how to use these, make sure you hire a professional to get it configured for you correctly. Some additional thoughts listed on this slide. We have step two there, enabling the unified threat management. If you have that available, the routers I showed on the previous page, these are typically about $500 or more, about 500 plus. The UTM shown there in step two is about $100, $150 a year subscription, depending on for the type of switch router you have. They provide that UTM and, the, and the updates to that firmware. The next step we're looking at, enabling the malicious website blocking. And I'm going to go show you some examples of how to check that. Um, I don't want to actually use real malicious websites. 
I leave that to professionals. You can look up your particular switch router on YouTube and there might be a professional out there who has done an evaluation using actual malicious websites and actual viruses to test the firewalls and the antivirus software. On here, I'm just gonna show you how you can see how yours looks. I'm not gonna go into using real malicious viruses and websites. Step four and so on, we wanna make sure you got the certificate inspection enabled, so you're checking it there at the outer boundary at the firewall, the intrusion prevention, virus scanning, and so on. You got the DNS rules, you can enable that. You probably want that early on in the list when, you, when someone does a web search, it'll prevent them from going to malicious websites. Just another layer of protection there. And uh, deep packet inspection, if the device you have will support that. And then lastly, and make sure you're enabling the rules for both inbound and outbound traffic, since a lot of people using these might have a miner, or if you're running a stake pool or something like that, you're gonna have to have the traffic in both directions being scanned. Next, let's switch over to the Windows operating system and take a look at our firewall checks and our antivirus checks. For antivirus, I installed Zone Alarm Security on this Windows uh, virtual machine that I have running here. And it's pretty simple. I actually like this. This was a free zone alarm, antivirus and firewall. I'm not, again, I'm not endorsing the product, but this is a pretty good product here. If you want to check it out, look up some reviews on YouTube. On the antivirus, I've run it. And it says protected. It also has a firewall running, protected. I'm going to view details on antivirus. Enabled. And I've scanned the computer here. Now I do have, it shows viruses have been detected. Those are test viruses that I downloaded. I'm gonna show you. These are not harmful test viruses. Again, don't download real viruses to check this. Check out the pros. Unless you're a pro and you really know what you're doing, avoid that. This is just to show you how your antivirus scanner responds so that when you do get a virus, you'll know what the response looks like. It's usually pretty intuitive. Okay, there's a firewall built in here also with sets of rules. Software firewall turned on. So let's take a look at how this behaves and how it relates to the physical firewall and the antivirus scanner. What I'm gonna do is launch Edge and go to a web page called icar.org. I'm gonna go to the anti-malware test file, download tab. And here's some sample files. Here I have icar.com. And these are all different types of uh, viruses or, that are test viruses. So I select this one. And that, that was a double whammy block there. It was caught by the firewall for a split second. Then it flashed to the Windows Defender um, protection. So there's that's pretty good protection right there. Um, it says, we do not recommend you continue this website has been reported to Microsoft for containing threats to your computer that might reveal personal financial information. So there it screened it based off of the URL or some level and it reported back to the web browser, Windows Defender Smart Screen. <clears throat> I'm going to select more information and disregard and continue, not recommended, because I know what this web page is. So I'm going to disregard and continue. And I see it was blocked initially by the firewall itself. The firewall caught that there was a virus inside this before it even got to the computer. Because on Unified Threat Management, I have the f firewall set to scan for viruses. So there's one example, and I can do these other checks here, and it gets caught again, okay? But not all of them, like the zip file might not get caught by the firewall. I checked it earlier. Oh, it didn't, yeah, firewall catches it. Firewall caught the zip file, but um, Windows, Defender didn't recognize that one, so good catch there. Take a look at this one. Caught by the firewall again. Uh, so these files are secured with uh, SSL. So let's see what happens here. So like that one. This one comes to the firewall. It says, what do you want to do with it? Okay, so well, I'm going to run it. Let me try running it. And it says it's unsafe to download. It was blocked by Windows Defender Smart Screen. It was good. So it's in the downloads, unsafe files blocked. Let me go to the downloads folder. Um, it's not even in my downloads, okay, that's good. So the nice thing about using this test website is you can see what the response looks like on Windows Defender to a virus, that one's pretty obvious. 
you can see what the firewall looks like when it responds to a threat and you can see how the antivirus responds and it looks like Windows Defender does a really good job of stopping stuff I haven't seen Zone Alarm actually have to trap anything yet let's take a look at a slide that expands on those steps and then on to the procedure this screen shows an expanded view of the steps we're about to perform there's a little bit more detail here so you can take a few moments you can pause at this point and review the steps so that you have a rough idea of what's going to happen next let's continue I'm using Windows 10 as recommended by one of the viewers we'll begin by launching Microsoft Edge for our web browser I'm going to be using three websites for this procedure the three websites we'll be using are dailyswallet.io, GitHub, and GPG for Win. And I'm going to check those websites real quick, take a look at their certs. Dailyswallet.io is good. We're on the correct one. GitHub, good to go. And GPG for Win, also good to go. Windows 10 has a lot, a lot of nice uh, security features in it. I'm going to link these three websites in the description section of the YouTube page. Now we're going to go to the download section and download Daedalus. When it asks what do you want to do, we're going to hit save. It's running security scan and view downloads. There is my downloads folder. Complete. and we'll come back to that. Next we're going to verify the checksum of the file we just downloaded. The procedure here says press the Windows Start menu and type command. Now on Windows 10, um, Windows Start menu doesn't have the run bar. It's right here inside Cortana. So you would go in Cortana and type command, but if you have older versions of Windows it's in the start bar. So CMD for command. That launches a terminal window. I'm going to close that out. The way I normally do it is, I'm going to show you that real quick, is, is you press and hold the Windows key next to the space bar, then tap the letter R. It launches the run pop-up window. Then you type in command, CMD, and hit OK. That launches a terminal. Two different ways of getting to it. I'm going to reconfigure my windows here so we can see a little better for what we're going to do next. So now that I have my windows sorted, I'm going to go through the procedure where I type in CD for change directory, capital D-O-W-N for downloads. Then I press tab to complete the word downloads and hit enter. That puts me in the downloads directory. Now I'm going to type in the command certutil space tac hash file space D-A-E for Daedalus and press tab to complete the word for me. Then space S-H-A 256 for SHA 256 so it'll run that math on it. Hit enter. It executes the program and returns a unique number shown here. Charlie Echo 7, Echo Bravo 1, etc. All the way through Echo 442 Bravo 4. I compare it to this showing in the web browser. Charlie Echo 7 Bravo 7 Echo Bravo 1, so on. Echo 442 Bravo 4 at the end. And you verify that the numbers are match and we're good. So that verifies that the binary is intact and it's the correct binary according to the number shown on the web page. Good to go so far. And we verified this checksum here. I'm going to compare it to the checksum shown on the GitHub page. And it's the same as shown here. This is a good way to double check in case a website has been hacked. If you bounce it against two different web pages, the chances of two different websites being hacked with the same information is much less likely. So it's an extra step in security by doing this. Now that we verified the checksum, we're going to go back and verify the signature of the Daedalus download by clicking this link here on the web page. That's going to take us to the procedures where that's where we download GPG for a win and follow from there. So now we're here. 
obtain both the Dataless Installer execute file, which you already downloaded, and its corresponding execute.asc signature file, and put them in the same directory. Here's our Dataless file that we downloaded. Now we're going to go get the ASC file from GitHub instead of from here. We're going to download the Dataless executable ASC file from GitHub because, again, the chances of two different websites being compromised is much lower. So it increases our security. So I'm going to download it. I'm going to save it, not open it. Close this bar out. And it's now in our downloads folder. Back to the procedure. That completes step one, but instead of getting them from the same website, got from two different websites. Now we need to obtain the GNU PG package from GPG for Win.org, which I already have open. So I'm going to open in a new tab. Then we're going to proceed with the installation and launch the Cleopatra component. Download. The files downloaded. We're going to save it. Running security scan. Close this. Now I'm going to do an extra integrity check. I'm going to verify that we have an intact binary using the SHA-256 checksum just like we did for Daedalus, I'm going to press Windows R to launch the Run pop-up window. Then enter CMD to launch a command prompt terminal. Same as before, I'm going to type CD space DOW and Downloads. I'm going to start typing Downloads tab complete by hitting the Tab button. Hit Enter. I'm in the Downloads directory. Now I'm going to type certutil space tac hash file space gpg tab complete space SHA-256 enter and compare the result to the web page. SHA-256 gpg for win 3.1.3 executable is here charlie3 charlie18150 etc bravo72034 I compare the two numbers, and it's a match. So I have a good binary. I'm going to exit and return to the procedures. Now we're on step three. Proceed with installation and launch the Cleopatra component. I'm going to go to Downloads, GPG for Win. Double click it to launch. Yes. Setup begins. Okay, welcome to the installation. Next. Here's the Cleopatra component. There's some other components with it. Next. Install. Run Cleopatra, finish. Minimize and return to the procedure. The next step is step four, unless you already have a personal GPG key, you have to create one, which is required for step six. Step six is down here. It's mislabeled as step one, but just they're probably gonna fix this website, so treat this as step six. So inside Cleopatra, we're gonna select the menu item, file, new key pair, create personal PGP key pair. Let me rearrange the windows for a minute. Be right back. Much better. So continuing with step four, select the menu item file new key pair. I can also start from here, but I'll go from here like it says. File, new key pair, create a personal open PGP key pair, name and email address. So that's step four, sub step two, hit next.
and create. Now we're here on four sub step three. Choose a passphrase to protect your personal key. Key pair successfully created. Now I hit finish. It gives my fingerprint here. Now we're on step five. Import the IOHK key. Sub step one, file lookup on server. I'm going to copy and paste signing authority, IOHK.io. says import the key. Do not certify the key just yet. I'm going to go ahead and import both of them in case I need them, but this is what we're looking for. Signing authority at OHK.io. DevOps is not necessary. And import. Okay. And step five is step five, sub step five. Do not certify the key just yet. Number six is right click on the key and choose details and ensure the fingerprint is this fingerprint right here. So I'm going to go to the signing authority at IOHK.io, details, and here's the fingerprint. Verify it's a match, and it's a match. It says, if it is, we are good to go. Now we go on to certify the IOHK key. So there's a lot of double checks in this process. This is step six, sub step one. Once you have a personal GPG key, right click on the imported IOHK key and choose certify. Right click, certify. Enable the IOHK user ID and tick, I have verified the fingerprint checkbox and proceed. You should receive a message saying, certification successful. IOHK signing authority. Tick, I verified the fingerprint. Next. And you have two options, certify only for myself or everyone to see. I'll go ahead and put it on everyone. Send cert to certificate, certify. Enter the passphrase. Okay. Exporting to public server, it's a permanent continue. Certification successful. Export successfully, that's from, okay. Export successfully was from the previous window. Certification successful, that's what we're looking for. So we finished step six, sub step four. Receive a message saying certification successful. Finish. Now we're ready to verify the installer binary. We're gonna click decrypt verify button on the Cleopatra toolbar and select the Daedalus installer. Part of step two says the .asc signature file must reside in the same directory, and it does. Now hit open. And the verification process begins. And that's a valid signature verification. This is the window we're looking for. When the signature is created, it's verified by IOHK signing authority right here. It has that last group of hexadecimal numbers from their uh, PGP signature that we verified. Everything's good to go. This is what we're looking for. That's what we need. Now we're ready to install Daedalus. On to the installation of Daedalus. Close this out. Put these away. Close all tabs. Downloads. Launch the Daedalus executable. Don't get confused with this is the ASC executable. It's not executable, it's an ASC file, but it has a .exe extension, but it's an open PGB file. This is the one we need to launch, and the size is 205 megabytes, so obviously this is an installer. This is the file we need to launch. I've pre-installed the blockchain, so it won't take nearly as long to synchronize.
Installation complete. We continue. blockchain is synchronizing here I create a new wallet the next screen is going to give us our 12 word phrase this is the seed to create your private key. Can we enter any version Dallas in order to restore your wallet? Please make sure no one's looking on your screen. And this is why we checked that our network was good to go. We're on a private network, preferably on Ethernet and a virus scanner to make sure that there's no screen recorder or screen capturing or keystroke loggers that are tracking what we're doing. So we check that and hit continue. And we write down all of these words. Please make sure you write these down carefully and thoroughly, word for word, letter for letter. I've seen many help support requests on the Cardano forum because people misspelled a word whenever they wrote them down. And they can usually go in the forum and ask for help and people help them decipher which word it is they were trying to get. But the best way to do it is make sure that you do it right the first time. If you do run into problems, make sure you get on that community tech support forum or the forum.cardano.org forum and get some help. But you got them written down correctly, you hit, yes, I've written it down. Next, you select each word using a mouse, which prevents a keystroke logger from capturing what you're typing in. And upon selecting the last word, if it's legit, the screen will change to this recovery phrase and it'll repeat it back to you in the same order that you put it in. Now keep something in mind, these wallets that I create for YouTube videos, I delete these. So don't replicate this wallet because someone's probably going to be goofing around and they're going to replicate it just to see if they can. Well, they're going to succeed. So don't send money to any of these wallets that I make on YouTube. Don't use them because they are compromised and you don't want those kind of wallets on your computer. People are going to mess around with them. Okay, so I got my recovery phrase in correctly because I got to this screen. If it was wrong, I would have been stuck on the previous screen until I got it right. So now that I'm here, I can check. I understand my wallet and tokens are held securely on this device, not on any servers. Well, kind of. not. It's held on the blockchain. The private key is held on this device. And number two, I understand this application is moved to another device or to leave my wallet can only be recovered with a backup phrase. So make sure you have this written down and you put it away securely where nobody can see it. Find a secure means of storing that phrase and hit confirm. Now you're complete. You got a wallet made. You're ready to go get you some ADA. I'm going to add this one last little bit in here for people who want to check the signature of the GPG for win file. I'm going to go to downloads here. Let's take a look. So when you go to install these files, instead of actually doing the installation, I'm going to pause here and hit show more details, show information about the published certificate. And we can see here Windows has this nice feature where it's checking the Certificate, I can go to certi certification path here. The certificate is okay, so that's good. I can also double check or triple check. I can go into details and look through these details. Let me get where they're. Uh, thumbprint down here. Okay, so I'm going to have to write this number down because I can't copy it into a file from there. Um, so anyway, Delta Echo 16 Delta 5, Foxtrot Echo 89, Foxtrot Alpha Bravo 3. So I'm going to go compare this to the signature on their page. No, because I don't actually want to install it's already there. Let's go back to their page. Check integrity. So go back to GPG for win. 
after you select the download you get this page check integrity and it gives you more details on how to check using the Microsoft installer code sign certificate here's the one at the very top this is what we are signed with and there is the number I just checked Delta Echo 16 Delta 5 etc all the way to the end that's the number I just looked at inside the window Foxtrot Echo 89 Foxtrot Alpha Bravo 3 and that's the number that, that appears here except that when we go to uh, look at that signature when we go to install it it hides it so let's go back here and that's the same number well there you have it I hope you found these procedures useful the number one thing to remember when you're operating these digital currency software platforms on board your home computers is, is security, security, security. Make sure you have all your security measures in place. Don't take any shortcuts. You want to make sure anything you can do to keep your network secure and keep your software secure, that's what you want to do. You want to avoid the malicious websites and avoid going to nefarious websites that could compromise your computer. If you enjoyed this video, Please feel free to click like and subscribe. Also, leave me some comments down below and let me know if you have any ideas for other types of videos you would like to see. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.